Hello, my name is Nancy Ewing. I'm an actress and a mother of three. You may recognize me from television commercial advertisements, from daytime dramas and nighttime dramas. This program is to introduce you to people like me, to members of the Baha'i Faith. They will give their personal thoughts on prayer and meditation and speak their reflections from different lives of service and personal transformation. You'll also see people of many races, backgrounds, classes, and diverse cultures from around the world who devote their lives to many forms of service to God. And you'll learn some basic facts about the Baha'i Faith and the new world we're working to establish. I believe very strongly in the Baha'i Faith. My faith has been a transforming experience. As a world family, our places of worship reflect a bright light in our times. I see the members of our faith and its temples as symbols of the spirit of humankind, slowly emerging today from a sea of outworn traditions. Prayer and meditation are of primary importance to each and every Baha'i, for we believe that we must change the world first and foremost by changing our own personal characters as empowered by prayer and meditation. And through acts of loving kindness and encouragement, we give God's love to each other. But in these times, many people's spirits are suffering and our values and our moralities, our very spirits are being suppressed by an overwhelming materialism. There is no time for spirituality. There is no time for building families. Well, prayer, of course, is the cornerstone of spirituality. And really, spirituality cannot be achieved without prayer. I find that prayer and meditation, far from being a, an esoteric practice that's removed from my daily life, are really the tools that help me to come to grips with life, that help me to deal with my children and my husband and my friends, and to make the choices in my life that I have to make. Prayer is part of the nourishment that our souls need, or our spirit needs, to grow and to thrive. So I see it as uh, food for our soul. I recognize that I am not capable of uh, taking on the tasks that life has before me alone, that I'm not an island. And so I again look to um, my Creator to assist me, to help me to, to grow. Prayer is a sense of, of uh, my recognition of the weakness that I have and my ability to rely on the great strength, and that's capitalized G as great strength that exists in God. When I've said a lot of prayers, there are times that a great flood of spiritual energy has come to me. A happy energy, I'll call it. So prayer does give you spiritual energy. It gives you happiness. Every time a patient comes to me for consultation or for surgery, the Baha'i writings tell me that I'm supposed to turn towards God to say a prayer to invoke God's name, even if I don't say a long prayer, at least just saying God's name. To have this sense of wonder and awe and grandeur, uh, to, to look in all things with the eyes of, of, of wonderment, to find God within them, to express the unexpressible, the things that are within us, that uh, the, the beauty of color and, and form and, and light and, and, and joy. Holy places of worship have been built by the believers of every religion as places to praise God, to find that awe and the grandeur, beauty, the light and the joy which is the music of our souls. We Baha'is have special reasons for building houses of worship around the world. One is to bring all the religions, races, cultures, and nations in unity through the love of God. The temples are places where all the books of God may be recited by any sincere believer. The Baha'i Faith has no ministers nor clergy of any kind and there is no preaching nor ritual. We are told by our founder to build ye houses of worship throughout the lands in the name of God. 
Each is of nine sides and a dome, and each is the center of its community. Each symbolizes and introduces the new faith dedicated to the advancement of all the peoples of the earth through a commonwealth of nations. The first Baha'i Temple in the West is in the United States. On the shores of Lake Michigan, in Wilmette, north of Chicago, rises a unique house of worship. It is a place of prayer and meditation. In all seasons, a haven for those who wish to turn to God and seek sustenance and strength. The Baha'i community which built the house of worship is composed of people of diverse origin, of every race and cultural background. During weekly worship services, all celebrate the praise of the Lord with passages read from the Holy Scriptures of all the world's religions and from the Baha'i faith. The choir lifts its voice in noble themes. For music is a ladder by which souls may ascend unto the realm on high. Turning to God in worship enables Baha'is to receive the emanations of spiritual power and inspiration. And coming to the house of worship inspirits them to live by the unifying principles of the new revelation and to spread the light of guidance through their lives of service. Baha'is believe that this temple also signifies the coming spiritual transformation in America. The prayer for America asks God to confirm this revered nation, to upraise the standard of the oneness of humanity, to promulgate the most great peace, to become thereby most glorious and praiseworthy among all the nations of the world. I am Marisol Rivera, another Baha'i voice and an eager spirit to tell you about the faith I have espoused. New doors to beautiful experiences have opened to me ever since I decided to become a Baha'i. Being raised as a Christian and in the Latino culture with its blend of multiple races, I felt deeply the need for the unity of humankind and of all religions so clearly taught in our faith. All the religions of God are represented in Baha'i worship. For Baha'is believe that they are all one religion, each faith embodying the message of the manifestation of God. The temples are the first signs of a new, worldwide civilization founded on spiritual and moral principles. In each house of worship, I, I think there is a promise that um, in the same way there are all of those doors and all of those entrances from any side that you approach it because we all come from a different perspective a different point of view and we see things differently yet it is possible for us to be united if you go to a religious area whatever religion it is and you know that tens hundreds thousands of years invocations or prayers to god have been said in that spot it feels different there's a sense of reverence where prayers not just for the baha'i faith but every religion Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Jewish, all the religions. Prayers have been said. They're honored, respected. You feel the transformation. The building isn't the same. It's not just a set of stones and girders, but it's a holy place. The design of that house of worship implies the acceptance of diversity and the acknowledgement of the fact that people are on different paths and people are in different stages of development. I see those houses of worship as symbols of unity? The Baha'i Temple of Australia is a beacon set among the gum trees. Community events of faith bring together the peoples of the continent in the healing spirit of unity. This diverse assemblage of many religions and races and the sharing of prayers and readings from the world's scriptures signals the near fulfillment of the promise of Jesus in the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
The temple also signifies the goal of establishment of social justice in a world that has already become one neighborhood. The temple is a bright light of Australasia. In the Taunus Hills near Frankfurt, in the heart of Europe, a continent torn apart for centuries by religious conflict, the Baha'i community has built a house of worship dedicated to religious tolerance. This modernistic temple of light represents a new consciousness in Germany. The national center is close by. A secretariat with offices, a bookstore library, and an auditorium for educational activities. The House of Worship attracts worshippers because of its unusual design. But particularly as it embodies what Baha'is envision as a coming spiritual reformation throughout Europe, that they shall be of those who foster peace. In the temple, Baha'is and all who come to share their spirits with others are engaged in worship of the Lord. They lift up their voices in a song of the kingdom and seek to lead the people aright toward unity and love. Baha'is believe that the moral winter of European empire and warfare has become a springtime of hope and leadership toward world peace, eventually leading us to a great commonwealth of democratic nations. On the Singing Mountain near the Panama Canal, the first Baha'i Temple in Latin America was built 25 years ago. Indigenous Baha'is gathered from Central and South America to inaugurate their own dawning place of the praise of God. Among the many Indian Baha'is were Emaya and a Guaymi who shared experiences. El Espíritu de Baha'u'llah ya nos ha llegado ahora, porque mira, usted no sabe leer y escribir, y yo tampoco, pero yo ahora, donde yo he venido aquí, en este lugar, sí. y casi mayormente era, era antes yo era ciego, porque ya ahora ya acepté a Bajaulá, y ahora Bajaulá me está guiando, iluminando, guiando. ya tengo la luz, su espíritu. Through this enlightenment, the original peoples of the Americas find honor for their great contributions to world civilization. The Indians, many thousands strong, have discovered within the Baha'i community a deep respect for their worthy cultures. Joining their fellow worshippers as prayer is offered, they heed the exhortation. Toda alabanza es para ti, oh mi Dios, quien eres la fuente de toda gloria y majestad de grandeza y de honor, de soberanía y dominio, de su si le confieres el honor de reconocer tu muy antiguo nombre. Desde toda la eternidad no hay otro Dios más que tú, el Omnipotente, el Exaltadísimo, el Todopoderoso, el Sapientísimo. This place of prayer and beauty gives an inkling of the promised renaissance of the first American peoples. The original peoples of the Americas have been forgotten in the tides of change. Their enormous gifts have been largely unsung. Yet, the Baha'i writings prophesy a role of spiritual leadership soon to come. On Kinkaya Hill in Kampala, rises a temple dedicated to the unity of the peoples of Africa motherland of the human race. This house of worship welcomes all religions, tribes and cultures, promising a new way of life which will bring prosperity to all through a union of humankind. Baha'is, friends and visitors direct their steps to the temple for prayer and meditation and to absorb its beauty and serenity. They come to listen to the verses of God from all the prophets and religions, accepting the exhortation that 
ye must become the very soul of the world, the living spirit in the body of mankind. They hear the verses of God from the many holy scriptures of the world read aloud in the languages of Africa, including the English of a past empire. The voices of Africa's hope are raised in the song to the Lord, expressing faith in the coming kingdom of God on earth, now possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. As Baha'is express a family love for each other, their spirits are lifted beyond Uganda into harmony with all the world. Reluctantly, they depart for their homes and their busy lives. For Baha'is, this house of worship symbolizes the coming unification of Africa. It is a lighthouse for Africa's bright future. To Apia in Western Samoa came hundreds of visitors from Australasia and beyond for the 1984 inauguration of its new house of worship. The King of Samoa, the Malyatoa Tanumafili II, who is a Baha'i, and his wife were the official hosts leading the procession of guests into the shining place of the praise of God. A rapt audience heard the Malyatoa welcome the throng of attendants. My sincere and warmest expression of thanks goes to the members of the Baha'i faith all over the world. His eloquent speech called for all people to arise in that love of God which is expressed in this house of worship. A traditional dance dramatizes the story of the temple's construction. Thus, through their lively cultures, the Polynesians and other Pacific peoples enrich the Baha'i faith. Eventually, the Baha'i community will build houses of worship in every nation and local community, large or small, where Baha'is live. All are called the dawning place of the praise of God. Each is to be a center for institutions devoted to social, humanitarian, educational, and scientific pursuits. In addition to administrative facilities, kindred agencies will include schools, large and small, teaching institutes, radio stations, publishing trusts, homes for the aged, cemeteries, and many others. Not only are Baha'i temples centers of worship and service, but Baha'i temples are also symbols of excellence in human achievement. For Baha'is, this creativity began with our first house of worship in Ishkabad, Turkmenistan. The house of worship at Ishkabad was built in 1902 by Persian Baha'is fleeing from persecution. With freedom in Asiatic Russia, they constructed service institutions on their extensive property. A large meeting hall served to several thousand Russian and Persian Baha'is. Close by were schools for boys and girls, a hospice and a medical dispensary, all serving the people of Ishkabad. Their temple was built with faith and hope by persecuted Baha'i refugees. Tragically, the beautiful temple was shattered by an earthquake. Its people were exiled or fled after new repressions. However, they planned to rebuild in the future. The Baha'i faith came to India in 1880. Its new adherents aspiring to build a national temple in New Delhi. Land was found in a greenbelt area of the capital, site of an ancient village called Bahapur, which means a place of glory, home of Baha, name of the founder of the Baha'i faith. Architect Faribor Saba tells that. In a small city of, of India, I met a man, an ordinary Baha'i, who 
came to knew it was her that I, I am going to design about the temple. And then he, for the first time, he mentioned to me the lotus. Yet, as I returned to travel, everywhere I went, I saw the lotus in front of me. I could not escape from this concept, everywhere. A model revealed that the natural form of a lotus could be realized in a nine-sided house of worship with a petal dome. Foundation work at the site began early in 1978, when Hindus, Sikhs, Muslims, Jains from all parts of India arrived to share the privilege of erecting a matchless house of worship. Over seven years together, they met the challenge of a unique engineering feat. Night and day, an extremely complex operation proceeded, flawlessly and without interruption, in scorching heat, torrential rains, and equipment difficulties. Thus, through the workers' brains and sweat, the soul of India suffused this inspired structure. A skin of durable marble plates produced a gleaming mosaic covering the concrete shells. When the finished building embraced its capstone, inscribed with the symbol of the oneness of God, the oneness of religion, the oneness of humanity, and thus at the peak of the dome the soul of the lotus became visible. The Baha'i Temple for India had bloomed. It attracts more than 5 million visitors a year. It welcomes all races, all religions, all cultures. Journalists have called it the new Taj Mahal. It is a masterwork in concept and execution. Powerfully, it evokes the recognition that religion is the educator of mankind and that the religion of God is one, its Indian heart, the Lotus of Bahapur. I was raised in a Christian family. And the prayer that we used regularly was the only prayer that was revealed by Jesus in the New Testament. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And it wasn't until I became a Baha'i that I really understood that Jesus was prophesying the new age, the new era of peace and justice. Thy will be done, God's will will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. I have just a fantastic feeling of um, promise and hope because I see that there is an overall willingness of many, many people to disrupt their own lives in order to bring comfort and peace to someone else. We Baha'is have a treasury of original and authentic new scripture, books in many languages, and of prayers on almost every subject, for marriage and families, for meetings and holy days, for children, youth, and parents, for healing, for spiritual qualities and creativity. The Baha'i Faith has given me specific prayers to say. I have prayers on assistance, teaching, unity, on rising up in the morning, on going to sleep at night for my children, my father who is deceased. I don't have to create in my mind words to talk to God. Sometimes I do, but more often I have these already beautiful phrases that have been given to me on such a wide range of topics. Indeed, daily prayer is an indispensable component of our daily spiritual lives as emphasized by all of the great religious teachers. People praying in silence, in privacy, 
or in houses of worship can reduce their daily stresses, transform their lives, and change the world through conformance with God's will for each of us. Well, I feel it is possible to change the world into a spiritual place. It's going to take a lot of time, and it's going to take a lot of good people doing it. But it'll never be done unless it's done by the hand of God. God's people of good deeds, sacrifice, and service must be found and educated if we are to win His plan for the unification of humanity. His manifestation admonishes us, O ye people, know ye the value of this time, of this the day of God. Baha'i houses of worship are symbols of the spirit of mankind, of God's covenant with man. They are signs of the coming age of spiritual unity, of a new cycle of glory.